What's up, everybody? I guess I felt like making another video today. So let me get to it. Whenever you look in to speak the truth, whatever arguments you propose, make sure you also, if only in your head, propose arguments to the contrary. Play devil's advocate with yourself. Argue with yourself. And try to see if maybe, maybe you're wrong, right? It'll help you become a much better debater. Not only because it'll allow you to be one step ahead, at least, of the average fanboy or ideologue out there, but... Ultimately, you're going to quote-unquote win the debate because you will be speaking the truth. I hate ideologies and I can't stand ideologues. You know, whenever you criticize any fighter that has a lot of ideologue fanboys... Usually what they'll do is accuse you of having an ideology, right? They will project their own way of looking at the world on you. Case in point, when you're criticizing a fighter and providing, you know, credible arguments with video evidence, something that no ideologue does or almost never, Right, because cognitive dissonance is a bitch. And it's difficult to lie when you have the truth in front of you. But whenever you do that, a lot of the times these people will say, Well, you just don't like this guy because and you know, then there'll be skin color, race, you know, eye shape. <laughs> but what they're really telling you is that because we know that they are ideologues, what they're really saying is the reason why they support and hype the fighter is insert skin color, nationality, eye shape. I'm a round eye, just for the record. <laughs> but ideologies are really easy to pick up on in boxing and Case in point here being Inoue, let's, let's give you an example. So, at some point, a couple of years ago, I suppose, maybe even longer than that, Inoue became a pound-for-pound -pound fighter because Lomachenko was, right? That was the ideology <laughs> for a lot of people. I didn't have Lomachenko on the pound-for-pound -pound list up until he beat Rigondiao, but that's just me. A lot of people did. You know, with every Inoue victory, it doesn't matter who he fights. Every single Inoue victory since the time where he was mentioned as a pound-for-pound -pound fighter, his fanboys, or the ideologues in, in this case, they've been using that as proof positive that He's a pound-for-pound -pound fighter, right? It didn't matter that Inoue wasn't improving or wasn't showing any improvement, very little, if any. It didn't matter that he's still making the same mistakes he was making two or three years ago when he was already a pound-for-pound -pound fighter, according to a lot of these people. It didn't matter. It doesn't matter that he doesn't have the boxing skill of someone like Lomachenko or Golovkin, right? It didn't matter who he fought. They already set the parameters, right? And the parameter was, well, there was no parameter. The criteria was the result, the bias. Inoue is a pound-for-pound -pound fighter, and we're going to twist reality to fit that narrative. That's basically what they've been doing, right? So they cherry-pick the fact that he's won a title in this or that division, meaningless, however meaningless that title might be, it doesn't matter. 
You understand? So, an ideologue doesn't argue with himself. He just has a conclusion and he looks... He cherry picks evidence to confirm that bias, right? And an ideologue might look at Golovkin's fight with Marta Rosian, with Golovkin being a pound for pound fighter, and they might cherry pick certain things out of that fight, like Golovkin getting hit, right? Golovkin going a whole round more, longer than with a smaller guy, right? <laughs> than Inoue with a bigger guy, right? And they'll ignore the fact that. Clearly, McDonald was drained and Marta Rosian was healthier than ever before, not having to struggle to make 154 pounds, so on and so forth, right? They'll ignore the fact that Marta Rosian was better than McDonald, which is maybe why he was able to land punches and so on and so forth, right? They won't argue with themselves. They'll just cherry pick evidence to back up a bullshit claim. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to argue with myself and we're going to look at Golovkin and we're going to compare his fight against Marta Rosian with Inoue's last fight. And especially, you know, moments where Golovkin makes mistakes and Marta Rosian takes advantage of him. Um, and we'll talk about, you know, maybe why. I'm not sure. We'll see. Why it took Golovkin a whole round longer. Why, you know, why Golovkin had to, we're going to, I'm going to have to point out how Golovkin achieved what he achieved in this fight versus Inoue and how much more skill and work it entailed. And at the end of it, you'll realize that, well, Marty Rush is just a better fighter than McDonald. Anyway, let's watch the fight. So, right away you see that Golovkin's got a lot of foot movement, right? But he's not bouncing around. He's not flat-footed. Just look at his feet, right? His heels are off the canvas. A lot, most of the time, right? He's not flat-footed, but he's not jumping around. He's on his toes, right? Just barely, see? He jumped out of range, but he didn't jump back in like Inoue, right? He came, in, he came back in behind a jab. He didn't just jump in and expose himself, right? Jumped in, hopped in behind the jab. It wasn't much of a hop. It was, there was more forward movement than anything, right? His right hand is by his chin. How do I know that? Well, because I watch Golovkin. Uh, his chin is hiding behind the shoulder. And above all, he's jabbing on the way in something Inuit wasn't doing, right? Now, Golovkin got a little bit lazy there and got countered, right? He's in there with a guy who's quick. He's got very good timing. He's fast. He's got the same reach as Golovkin, and he's able to take advantage of... Uh, Golovkin could have done a better job of setting up his jab, right? He didn't. He just kind of went for it, and he got countered. He paid the price. But here's the difference between Inoue's opponent, right? When Inoue was wide open for punches, McDonald, for whatever reason, wasn't able to take advantage. You give Marty Rosian the slightest opening, and he takes advantage, right? Why? Because he's a much better fighter than McDonald. See, Golovkin can't just walk in on this guy like Inoue was just walking forward with his hands down and, and disrespecting his opponent. He can't do that with Marta Rosian. Why? Because Marta Rosian is keen, right? He's fast. He changes levels to get under Golovkin's jab should it come, right? Boom. And then jumps in with the left hand to the body and right hand upstairs. Doesn't land anything. Golovkin changes the angle and resets, right? Now he's probing with his jab. Looking to get close. Looking to get close to, to Marta Rosian, right? 
Marty Rosen, even though he's bouncy, which isn't a good thing necessarily, it does help him to get out of range quickly. And not only that, but he can counter, right, while going back, something McDonald didn't show he could do. He was just going back and he was controlling. He was doing okay controlling, but he wasn't really throwing punches while moving back, right? Marty Rosen can go back and not in a straight line, right? And he can counter while his feet aren't set. Marty Rosen can punch on the move. McDonald couldn't. Golovkin has to move his head as he's coming in to avoid that counter jab, right? See that? Golovkin can't just barge through the front door. He has to use a lot more skill. Kind of a probing hook there. Doesn't land. They trade jabs. Right? Golovkin follows up. He's throwing a lot more punches than Inoue early, right? And he's landing. He has a more difficult opponent in front of him. And he's landing most of his shots, right? Sometimes he's probing, looking to set his punches up. And that's another reason why he is landing is because he's setting his punches up. Inoue wasn't doing that, right? Levels to this shit. This is a pound for pound fighter. Inoue is not. See how Golovkin is feigning? Not to say Inoue wasn't feigning, but Golovkin is just constantly feigning, right? Gets hit. Marty Rosen steps off the line and counters with the jab. Is able to get Golovkin. He, he's asking many more questions of Golovkin, complicating things for Golovkin, right? So Golovkin uses the jab to set up the right hand. Keeps jabbing, right? Jabbing on the way in. He can't just barge in on this dude. He's going to get hit. Even when he's jabbing on the way in and looking to slip Marty Rojan's jab, he still, he still does get hit. Marty Rojan is able to jab with him, right? But that's not because Golovkin is not as good as Inoue because he's clearly better. It's because Marty Rosen is better than McDonald by a mile. Right? Golovkin employs a little bit of control. Lends the jab. Steps off the line, right? Head movement. Looking to set up the right hand. But Marty Rosen circles out of there, right? Backs out of there. The punch wasn't there. But you see Golovkin setting up punches. Not just swinging wildly like Inoue. Setting shit up. And look, that could be because, again, Marty Rosen is asking these questions of him and McDonald wasn't. So again, I'm not saying that Inoue doesn't have this skill. All I'm saying is that I can't give him credit for something I haven't seen. Right? Golovkin's commitment to the jab and defense after he jabs. Sometimes he simply isn't quick enough to get away from the quicker opponent's punches. Marty Rosen is a lot more proactive. He's faster, right? He's, he's going for it. He's fighting. He's not scared like McDonald, so he's going to have a lot more success, right? But after Golovkin gets hit, he continues to jab. He continues punching, right? He's a fighter. There you saw a little bit of control from Golovkin, not allowing his opponent back in as he was backing out of there, right? He kind of fainted with the right hand and took a little jab from Marty Rosen, who again can punch on the move, unlike McDonald, who needed to set. And by the time he set, because he was so bouncy, Inoue was already in too close and smothering, right? Much better fighter. And Golovkin will bounce occasionally, but it's almost never two, two bounces in a row, right? Now, Golovkin gets criticized a lot for swinging, right? And even though I wasn't necessarily criticizing anywhere for swinging, I pointed it out because it could be a problem. But here, you, you know, 
an ideologue who doesn't know what they're looking at, but because they don't care to know what they're looking at, because they don't ask themselves questions, they don't play devil's advocate with themselves, might look at this and say, well, Golovkin is swinging, right? Okay, well, he's taking his hand, head off the line and he's telegraphing the right hand, right? Swinging it kind of wildly. Or he's bringing it from outside of, you know, his opponent's field of view, if you will. He, he, it's a pretty wide punch. I'm not sure it lands or doesn't, right? He squares up, but he avoids the counter. And now he switches to southpaw and swings with the other hand, right? Kind of a telegraphed, misses wildly, right? And I know this is in slow motion, but I'm going to play it to you for you in regular speed. And I want you to see how slow these punches are. They're not very fast, right? They're okay, but they're not very fast. They're telegraphed. They're easy to avoid, right? And above all, they're overhand punches, right? They're, they're high punches. There's a reason for that, and we'll get to it in a second. Inoue, on the other hand, was just swinging wildly for, this, for the sake of swinging wildly, right? He was loading up on these punches. He was trying to knock his opponent out. Golovkin wasn't trying to knock him out with these punches. He was showing him something, and you'll see why. See how he's, Golovkin, he's not flat-footed. See how he's tiptoeing in? He's on his toes constantly. He's just not jumping up. Throws the jab while protecting himself with the right hand, right? And avoiding the counter. Martyrosian is quick. Golovkin can't... He made some mistakes early. Was a little sloppy. A little lazy. And Martyrosian took advantage of it. So now he has to adjust. Look at Golovkin's feet. Just look at his feet right now. See? He's on his toes. On his toes constantly. Now he plants sometimes to get power in his shots. But he's on his toes, right? Cutting off the ring taking some jabs on the way in, moving his head, right? His opponent is asking many more questions of him. Jabbing and looking to avoid the counter, right? Still throwing mostly wide punches, except for the jab, the right hand is kind of wide, right? From outside and, and a little slow, swinging, right? And high, right? He's throwing a lot of those punches right now. Has him on the ropes. Marty Rosian is doing something McDonald wasn't doing. He's tying up, right? Slowing the action, smothering. McDonald wasn't doing any of that. Now Golovkin is looking to land a jab, do a little stutter step to set up another punch after that, right? But in between that, he's moving his head. Right? He has to do a lot more to get to this guy. It's a, see? Moving his head, changing levels while protecting himself. Right? When you saw Inoue throwing punches while coming forward, it was just wild swings with his hands down, right? Or, or, or away from his body. Just going for it, right? Golovkin's a lot more calculated. It's offense to defense to offense to defense, right? Marty Rosian is able to back him up, right? Even though Golovkin tries to control, but Marty Rosian is quicker and he gets inside of uh, Golovkin's punch, right? Switches stances himself a little bit there or maybe squares up a little bit. He's able to land his left hand, right? Golovkin has to fight him off because this guy, this guy's no joke, right? And he throws his punches with commitment. He has a good jab. He's fast. He throws combinations, right? He's not scared. He's able to hit Golovkin because he's trying to win the fight. Something McDonald wasn't doing, right? See, Marty Rosian is maintaining distance, controlling distance, but also stopping and setting before Golovkin sets so that he could meet him with punches, right? Uh, McDonald was just looking to maintain control distance, not really doing any of this, right? Marty Rosian grabs a hold of him, smothers after he's done punching, Right? He slips and counters. He's doing things McDonald wasn't showing us in that fight, right? Going to the body, feigning, right? Going low or to the body. 
changing levels. McDonald wasn't doing any of that, right? He's got the beat on Golovkin now. And look how fast he is with the counter, right? Even though Golovkin... I, I suppose he could have set this ja jab up better, right? And even though he's playing pretty good defense, the opening is there. Credit to Marty Rosian, he slips the jab. Uh, doesn't really land the counter. Grazes Golovkin because Golovkin ducks, right? He goes from offense to defense to offense, right? But he has a much more sophisticated fighter in front of him who's also going from offense to defense to offense to defense, right? Neither, neither Martyr, Ro sorry, uh, McDonald or Inouye were doing this. Offense, defense, offense, defense. They would go... Uh, Inoue was mostly offense and then once in a while defense. He was offense, 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 defense. And McDonald was defense, 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 offense, right? These guys are trying to thread the needle. D these guys are weaving their punches, right? They're looking for the openings. They're looking to create openings. This is a much higher level boxing match between two, not just Golovkin being better than Inoue, but Marta Rosian being better than McDonald by far. You see, as soon as Golovkin slips up a little bit, Marty Rosian stepped off the line, lined Golovkin up for the right hand before Golovkin was able to uh, completely turn his body. And as soon as Golovkin plants his feet, Marty Rosian attacks him, right? He doesn't let him set his feet. Right away attacks him and gets him with a nice little jab there, maybe grazes him with the right hand, gives Golovkin something to think about, right? But when he backs Golovkin up, Golovkin doesn't go back in a straight line like Inoue. He steps off the line, right? And just basic stuff like keeping your hands high up, which is what Golovkin does. Very competitive, close round. Um, arguably, Marta Rosian won it. I didn't think so, but I wouldn't argue if, if you did. Grazes him with that right hand. Golovkin is playing defense. He's rolling the punch, right? Doesn't quite do it. But Marty Rosian is switching stances or shifting stances, pursuing him, and is able to land the left hand. Oh, shit, you can, you can make a case that technically Marty Rosian is, is just as good, if not better, than Inoue. Honestly. You saw how Inoue struggled to, to land his punches while he was doing that, right? Even though McDonald was going back in the straight line. And Golovkin is stepping off the line and he's still, Marty Rosian is still able to hit him. Right? A lot of probing from Marty Rosian elicits a jab from Golovkin. But Golovkin, because he doesn't land he and he doesn't displace his opponent, he's wary of the counter, right? Huh? Let's slow it down a little bit. Beginning of the end. Right? Golovkin is still putting quite a bit of a curve on his right hand, right? Now he's trying to knock him out now, but he's not really throwing it very straight, right? I think he hurt him a little bit with that. Got a little excited and got hit, right? Marty Rosian can go backwards while punching he doesn't have to be set to punch but as soon as he touched Golovkin Golovkin went back on defense right Inoue was getting hit with two consecutive punches just just punching walking through his opponent's punches punching through him right not showing you the type of skill and awareness and ability to go from offense to defense to offense like Golovkin is right he was just eating punches walking through him that's not boxing skill. That's not pound for pound level material. That's just a strength advantage, right? See? Golovkin has to reset and reestablish his jab, right? Jabs, avoids the counter. Kind of a probing jab, avoids the counter, and then commits to a second jab. Um, slips, or attempts to anyway, Marty Rosian's jab. And now brings the uppercut into it all of a sudden. Let me back it up for you so 
you see what I'm talking about here. So, Golovkin so far has been throwing the jab and following it with not a perfectly straight right hand, kind of an overhand right, sometimes a looping swinging right, right? But that's what he's been doing. Jab, he's going to do it again, I'm sure. Jab, defense, right? And then look for another shot. Generally, it's been the right hand. Jab, right? Defense, looking for the right hand, right? Overhand right, high up, right? So those punches that he was throwing in the first round that were kind of slow and swinging and telegraphed, they were designed to make Martyrosian duck low. And as soon as he saw Martyrosian doing that, right? See? Ducking low. Because Golovkin is throwing overhand, right? Now he throws the jab. Does a little stutter step. Right? Throws the jab again. Another little stutter step. And Marty Rojan is now is dipping because he thinks the overhand right is coming in, right? So he's going to dip into that uppercut. Boom! See how Golovkin had to work? How he had to set his opponent up? And even though Marty Rojan gets hurt, or because he does... He grabs hold, right? Even though he's hurt, very much so. He's smothering, grabbing hold. Golovkin has to do something, right? It's not like McDonald who just got hit and just cowered and just stood there taking punches, right? Much better fighter than McDonald or that version of McDonald against Inoue. Anyway... You see, you see Golovkin working and setting things up, right? He will probe with the jab. And some of his probes are like stiff jabs even, you know what I mean? That's, that's one thing about Golovkin. Sometimes even his probes are damaging, right? He tries to do it again, but Marty Rojan is now keen to it, right? Because he's an intelligent fighter. You can't, you're going to have to mix it up with this guy. You can't just do the same thing over and over, right? And, and expect the same success. So Golovkin throws a jab, looks to play defense and set up another punch, right? But now Marty Rojan is keen. He knows the uppercut is coming. And now he's looking to counter. Golovkin has to play defense. And I mean, this is just beautiful boxing for both guys, man. It's, you know, it's action, reaction, action, reaction. And, and, Credit to Marty Rojan for fighting while going backwards, something that uh, a lot of fighters can't do, and McDonald definitely wasn't able to, right? Takes a jab from Golovkin that picks him up. Now Golovkin, because he picked him up and he expects him to dip down after being picked up, tries to uppercut, kind of a shovel hook. I'm sure he's uh, adjusting that punch on the fly. It doesn't work. Has to look out for the counter. Not only is he protecting his head with the right hand, keeping it high. He's also ducking under that punch, right? And bringing the overhand right because, look, guess what? It's there, right? Even though it really wasn't there, well, he was in position to throw it. And Marty Rojan stepped off the line, credit to him, right? It wasn't just going straight back. Now Marty Rojan wants to say, hey, I could throw uppercuts too, right? You got me dipping low? Well, I'm going to come up with uppercuts. Speed it up a little bit. Right? These guys are going tit for tat, jabbing at one another, right? Golovkin rolls the right hand, employing the shoulder roll, something he doesn't really get credit for because he's straight up and down, no special effects. Ha <laughs> ha. Now there's a lot of probing from Golovkin looking to see how Marty Rojan reacts, right? Is he going to dip into the uppercut or do I bring the... At this point in time, Golovkin is probing, looking at his opponent and he has two or three options or maybe even more. I don't know. Overhand, uppercut, you know, uh, a swing. Swing in this case to the body now, right? Golovkin can't just barge in through the front door swinging wild punches while dropping his hands. You know what I'm saying? Slips the jab, tries to land his own, but Marty Rojan is pretty adept at slipping the jab too. 
now Golovkin has gotten the advantage with the lead hand, I feel like, where, where he's starting to dictate with his lead hand, right? Giving him different looks, probing a little bit, trying that uppercut again, right? He's got Martyrosian dipping, but now Martyrosian is, is dipping, but also putting more weight on his back foot. Not just dipping into the uppercut, but dipping back, right? You see? Martyrosian dipping back and under. Very smart fighter, man. Martyrosian is no slouch. You got to work to beat this guy. Just just ask all the top-level fighters he's fought up until this point and arguably beat some of them anyway. You you can't just... You can't fight Marta Rosian stupidly. Now, Marta Rosian is feigning, looking to set up either an overhand or maybe an uppercut. Too much bouncing. You see, Golovkin tries to take advantage of the bouncing, but Marta Rosian is, is out of range. But he's still got that amateurish problem, right? Golovkin tries to time it. But it's just kind of probing, I suppose. Getting him to settle down. See how Golovkin jumps out? He doesn't jump right back in, right? He tiptoes back in. He has to respect Marta Rojan and his feints, right? But Marta Rojan has to respect Golovkin's counters as well. See, Golovkin is doing the same thing. Probing and, and then looking forward, Marta Rojan, looking at the reaction and then looking to work off of what uh, Marta Rojan gives him, right? But Marta Rojan says, fuck that, I'm out of here, right? Now he's running a little bit. And Marty Rosian got to the spot first. And before Golovkin could catch up, before Golovkin planted his feet, Marty Rosian attacked him and had success, right? Something um, Jamie McDonald either doesn't know how to do or just wasn't able to do. And then look at how Golovkin doesn't waste shots like Inoue was, right? When Golovkin throws, more often than not, he lands. Or at least makes contact. He doesn't just miss. Right? I mean, probes are probes. Right? See how he set that right hand up? He had to throw three probes while coming forward. Something Inoue wasn't doing. Right? Lands a jab and then probes. Setting him up for the right hand. Now, in this case, Marta Rosian didn't dip, didn't duck, he just went straight back. The, 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 the probing jab kind of forced him, blinded him, I suppose. And Golovkin, now he throws that overhand right with conviction, right? Because now he really wants to land it. Hurts Marta Rosian. And look at this, constant probing, constant jabbing, boom, another right hand. I mean, he's got him... Almost everything he throws lands. You know what I mean? Because he sets it up. It's not like Inoue just gung-ho. It doesn't matter whether he misses or not, whether he punches his opponent's gloves or as he was doing, um, uh, I think he was hitting his hips or something or his elbows, I don't know. You know, slapping, cuffing punches, none of that. Very calculated, very accurate, on-point types of punches, right? In the end, it's the same effect as Inoue, except against a much better fighter. Much better fighter. And in much better fashion. Golovkin had to work. He had to set these things up. His punches up. I mean, he could have, theoretically, he could have just walked through Martyrosian and traded punches with him, like what Inoue did. He could have done that. He would have been taking a risk, and Martyrosian can crack, you know what I mean? It's not like... McDonald with, with no punching power. But knowing what we know about Golovkin and his great chin, he probably could have done that, right? Marty Russian has been knocked down before. He's been hurt before. He could have just barged in through the front door, started exchanging punches, and you would have gotten the same effect, maybe, as Inoue McDonald. But he went about it in a much more calculated, much more skillful uh 
way. Uh, he, he went about it the way a pound-for-pound pound level fighter does. But again, if you're an ideologue who likes a certain fighter because of where they're from or whatever they represent to you as a person, you know, you might look at this fight here and, and just cherry pick instances instead of looking the bigger picture and asking yourself questions and arguing with yourself. You could very well just cherry pick evidence and say how Inoue actually did a better job, right? <laughs> yeah right don't be an ideologue keep it real thank you for listening